What's up, you guys? Orlando here with the Leisure Record Studio. Today, we're gonna learn how to record a saxophone in your own home studios. Coming up. I love saxophone. It's one of my favorite ever instruments and it's so sweet and so melodic. We're gonna capture that today here in the studio. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. And please, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. You know the drill, hit a like, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss any future videos from us. Yes, this happened since last video and we're gonna do something about it right now. Oh yeah, silky smooth again, just like the saxophone we're gonna record today. And I told my friend Elliot, an awesome musician and saxophone player to come and join us to the studio today and record something for us. And we're gonna see that coming up. And I wanted to talk to you about the three things that you need to have to accomplish a recording session like the one we're gonna do today. I'm gonna teach you how I do it in my own home studio so you know and you can apply the same concepts to your recordings. And the first thing we're gonna see today is the musician or the performer. In this case, we're gonna talk about the mindset that they need to have they need to come into the studio with the right mindset. Recording in a studio is very different to doing a live gig, so they need to know what to do. If you don't have the luxury of working with amazing players, you need to make sure that everything is set up for them and setting them up for success as well. If they and know what the studio looks like. If they've been there before, that's a big plus as well. If they don't have that luxury or you don't have that luxury to have them come into the studio prior, just, uh, you know, talk to them, relax a little bit uh, and set up the mood for a great recording session. The second thing that you need to be aware of is the room what the room sounds like if you have uh, acoustic treatment in your room as well. I set up my own uh, acoustic panels. I build them myself. And uh, this room, it's pretty much uh, treated acoustically and it sounds uh, great for the type of recordings I'm doing here. For this type of setup, you need to know your room. You need to know how it sounds because that's gonna affect uh, the recording of the saxophone in this case for today's session. And if the room sounds awful, uh, you're gonna have a lot of trouble afterwards cleaning up um, in the mixing process that recording. Before investing in other gear, please invest in acoustic treatment. That's a very, very important. That's one of the first things I did in my own home studio. Another thing about recording and about the room is the positioning. You're gonna be placing your microphone in the room. And I recommend you to move the microphone around and see the right place for it. Move the microphone around and try. This is a thing that you need to try for yourself. This is part of the recording process. So I already know my room, but you need to know yours. The other thing about the space is the mood. Just set up the mood. You're not a producer unless you have a LED light. Uh, come on, lights are really cool and they set up the mood. Uh, and that's a very important because when it's a nice and relaxing place, that actually allow us to be more creative. Uh, please make sure everything is comfortable, everything is tidy, that everything is organized, and uh, that you're setting up your musicians, your recording artists for success. And the last thing that we're gonna talk about today is about gear. What gear do you need to record? And it's as basic as your computer, an interface, and a microphone. That's all you need. 
in uh, today's session, since I'm gonna do a mic comparison, I'm gonna use two mics in this case, Rode NT2A and a Slay Digital ML1 microphone. I love these two mics, those are my go-to mics actually, and uh, we're gonna teach you how to set them up and uh, what to do with them, let's get to it. So here I have my two microphones right now, and I don't want you to focus on this thing because you don't need them to record saxophone actually. I just leave it there, it's not doing much. At most, what it's doing is just uh, taking the sound out and diffusing the sound actually. I want you to see the microphones. So I had it set them up in an angle like this. It's not completely 45 degrees, but it's just a little bit and uh, it's grabbing actually the body, not so much uh, towards the bell uh, of the uh, saxophone in this case. You need to try and set it up. It's a trial and error actually. You need to try for yourself what you're gonna do, what's the sound that you want actually from the saxophone. You need to try also the distance between the mic and the saxophone what it sounds better. So you hit record and then you try out and see what sounds the best. Try to put something on the floor to mark uh, where the saxophone player is actually playing because that's gonna help you uh, with consistency. Uh, you don't want the saxophone playing moving too much, either uh, going forward or backwards or just moving around. You want the saxophone player to be in one place and don't move and be uh, still. You need to record and you need to hear and you need to play it back and uh, see if the saxophone player is comfortable with that sound as well. They can uh, let you know, hey, you know what, uh, this is not working right uh, or I don't feel like that sounding the way I like it to feel. They can give you a feedback as well. So work with your saxophone player, that's always gonna help you. And guys, we're inside Cubase and these are the two recordings that we did for the uh, tutorial today. And we have here the Rody NT2A and the Slay Digital ML1 microphone. Those two tracks, I just basically created a couple audio tracks and record it simultaneously. I have the Rody NT2A going through a preamp and the Slade Digital, I have it going directly into my interface actually. First, what we wanna do is uh, listen a little bit to the music. And what we have here is just a simple arrangement. It's percussion bass, a keyboard that is coming in a little bit later uh, and strings. We're gonna play the music for a little bit. So you hear the vibe and uh, Let's take a listen. Pretty cool, right? So that's basically the music that we have. None of these tracks have any process whatsoever right now. So those two tracks are completely clean. I don't have anything activated um, on it. So let's take a listen first to the Rody NT2A. Uh, and I'm gonna go here to the bridge so you can hear this part here. Let's take a listen. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, I love that mic. And let's take a listen to the Slay Digital mic then.
sounds amazing as well. So uh, what you want to do, actually, it's select from those two uh, what works best for the track. But you need to take into consideration that if there's going to be vocals afterwards, you don't want anything super bright or kind of in the same frequency as the vocals as well. You need to play with that. You need to play with the arrangement and with the sound that you want to get. Actually, for this tutorial, uh, what I ended up selecting was the Slate Digital Mic. And what you're hearing right now is just a plain signal coming through the mic without any emulations. And the reason I'm saying uh, this is because this microphone, it's meant to be used with uh, virtual emulations that it uh, has, actually. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, disable all the processing that I have here, actually. And uh, it's already disabled the whole thing. Uh, but I want you to listen to first when I enable it, I want you to listen to these two mics that I have selected here uh, and hear the difference between those two first. I'm going to go ahead to the bridge here. I'm just going to select that. If you have a, a track, marker track, actually, you go to add track, marker track, which is this one. If you double click on any section like this, you're going to select that portion of the song. And that's a quick tip for Cubase users out there. In any case, uh, let's take a listen before uh, and after with the virtual emulations and for these virtual emulations, we're going to be selecting a FG44. That's an old uh, vintage mic, actually, which I love. Let's hear what it does, okay? First, it's going to be bypassed. Let's take a listen. Yeah, I love that sound. There's a lot more body in it. And I love the way it sounds. It's actually fitting better with the track, actually. So let's take a listen to this FG67 for a sec. Let's see how that sounds before. after that sounds pretty cool as well what i ended up doing in this case was activating the two of them and call me crazy but you can actually do that uh, with a uh, Slate Digital Mic. You can put a couple mics on it and let's hear how that sounds. Oh yeah, huge difference there. And that's just with the two mic emulations only. So what we are going to do after that is just set up a preamp, just as we have with the Rode. The Rode is going through a DBX uh, preamp. And this one, we're going to set up uh, an FG76 in this case. And I give it around 30, you know, 24 and 34 here um, uh, from virtual drive. Not too much, just a little bit. And... Um, Let's take a listen to that. 
It takes um, away a lot of the harshness of the original recording. It's a lot more body in it. Uh, especially, it sounds good with the rest of the music. That's what you want to hear. Don't just go around and solo the instrument and hear the sounds because you don't know if that's going to fit with the music. The most important thing is that this whole thing fits with the vibe of the song with the bite of the track that you're working with. What I ended up doing, it's basically selecting this mic. I believe the Slate Digital M01 is gonna stay because of the virtual emulations and the flexibility that I have with the sound. I ended up putting a little bit of saturation as well on it. Let's enable that in a little bit of compression as well. After that, just uh, a little bit of uh, high end uh, with a revival and just a tiny little bit of uh, thickness as well. And let's take a listen a before and after all that process really quick. Before. And after. Pretty cool. I'm very happy with that. Pretty simple, guys. Just select what works best with the track that you have, actually. After that, I just created a effect track. Actually, in Cubase, you go here, add track, effect track. And um, I set up a, a reverb, actually, a Slay Digital a Burp Suite Classic, actually. It's a plate reverb. And before the reverb, I always do this. I just uh, cut out the low end and the high end as well. I have a cut at 500 hertz and uh, uh, 5.3 kilohertz as well. And just a tiny little boost here uh, in 1.2. And uh, that's going to clean up a little bit the reverb as well. And uh, after that, I have this, uh, the drummer. It's an intelligent master processor, and I have it here on ambience. So I have a little bit of that as well for the reverb. And let's see how that sounds with that process, with that uh, reverb. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Pretty cool. I'm really happy with that sound. And that's pretty much it, guys. I'm not even touching EQ and full on compression on this. But as you can hear, uh, this fits right on with the track. And that's the main goal. Just go ahead, record, and select what works best for your track. And if you have more questions about my setup right here and how I process, just leave me a question below and uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much guys for watching this tutorial. I really enjoy doing it for you guys. Subscribe if you're new to this channel so you don't miss any further videos from us. And uh, you know the drill, just hit the like, hit subscribe, hit the bell. And until next video guys, don't stress, do your best, be blessed, and forget the rest. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.